Hi gorgeous, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ara. I am a 39 year old mother of five, beauty and fitness lover. I have been trying so hard to get this entire thing filmed. I'm gonna try again. This is my top three in all of my cheeks and lips category. I did the foundation and concealer and powders in a separate video. I will link that down below for you if you're interested. I'm gonna start off with lips though. These are my favorite three lip liners. Now I know everyone says how great these Charlotte Tilbury lip liners are. I don't own any Charlotte Tilbury. These are the three that I picked out that I reach for the most. What I did was, you know, I went through all of my lip liners. I know I've got three nudes here and I just picked out the ones that I reach for the most or that are the most stand out to me that I know are gonna work. Starting off with my Dior. This is the shade 001 nude look. No, it's actually the shade 100. <laughs> This is the shade 100. This one, I wasn't really sure why it was getting so much hype, why people were obsessed with this one, loving it so much, and then I bought it and I tried it, and I realized this actually deserves all of the hype, deserves all of the attention. This is the shade 100 nude. This pencil, okay, first off, it comes with a little brush if you wanna perfect the line. I think that is awesome. It's extremely expensive, it's Dior but it actually lives up to the hype. This thing is long lasting, it doesn't budge. Once I put it in place, like I can smear it if I wanna smear it and like blur it out, but once it's on, it's on. And I think this one is just so easy to reach for. It's a little longer than I would like because it has that extra brush at the end, but I think this is very useful. Overall though, if you can get this on sale with points at Ulta or with a coupon, pick up one of these because this is amazing. The second one is actually my favorite lip liner. I have used so much of it. I'm afraid of emptying this because I think this one is the longest lasting lip liner I own. It is the Kristen Audette Mel Thompson Kitten Liner. If you know, you know. This was honestly my favorite purchase that I ever made from Kristen Audette. I have a couple of their lipsticks. I've got a couple that just they feel nice, but they're not my favorite. This thing, woo, this thing is my favorite. It doesn't go anywhere. The color is very similar to the Dior, which is perfect because I needed something that was going to be just about this shade. And the Dior one is literally as close as I'm gonna get. I can put this one on and have a little bit of time to work with it and it won't go anywhere. I feel like I have yet to find this one in any other pencil. Even the Dior one, it doesn't last as long as the Kristen Ardette. I can, once it's on, it's on, it's not gonna go anywhere. I'm gonna give it a little bit of time to dry. But even the Dior one moves a little bit. Not that one, not the Kristen Ardette. I know that you can't get this one anymore. It's so heartbreaking to me, I wish I could, but I can't. So if I could just find one from Kristen Ardette that is literally just like it, I need it. The last one is my newest one. It is the Hourglass Shade 1 in Expose. I found this one to be so soft to apply. It is a little bit more blurring, not as opaque as the other two. You can kind of tell right here, it's a little more sheer. It lasts as long as the Dior, not quite as long as the Kristen Audette. It can smear out, like smear out, it can sheer out and like blend out a little bit easier than the other two. This one I feel I had an easier time doing a more like um, smudged effect, if you will. I have enjoyed this pencil so far that I ended up getting this one in the shade red and I cannot wait to have that one. But these are my favorite three nudes, period. And my favorite three that I've been reaching for, lip liners. I need to get the, the Charlotte Tilbury and see what all the hype is about for that one because honestly, if it blows any of these three out of the water for comfort, longevity, like blending, but I, I have no reason to go pick one up right now and unless I can get it on sale from Ulta or maybe even Sephora because the Sephora sale's coming up, I'm just sticking with these. Moving into lip glosses, I am not a big lip gloss girl, I'm really not. This is my Pat McGrath Go To Lore. 
of all the lip gloss formulas, this one is up there with what I like. It is sheer. It's got a little bit of that pale gold reflect to it. It's not so sticky on my lips that my lips stick together. It's quite a bit more comfortable. It's not as long lasting as I would like. I don't reach for glosses the way I do lipsticks, but when I want to wear a gloss or when I want to top a gloss over a lipstick, I'll reach for Pat McGrath. It is really comfortable. I do enjoy it while it's not my favorite favorite. This one feels good over lipstick and on its own, and especially this color, Gold Allure. I haven't found a lip gloss with this type of comfort and formula in a different like brand that is flattering for me. There's just, especially this shade, this shade is just flattering and I enjoy it. Then we have Miss Westman Atelier. When I first got these lip glosses, this one is the squeaky, squeaky clean. Oh my gosh, I even sounded squeaky. Squeaky clean liquid lip balm. It's more of a balm, but it's also like a, like a gloss hybrid. This thing is way more comfortable than the Pat McGrath. I can wear it on its own anytime I want. It is so sheer. It has a beautiful luminosity gloss to it. It's not as, the viscosity isn't as thick as the Pat McGrath. Definitely more comfortable, definitely more balmy. Still has a bit of that gloss feel to it. And the package packaging, it's weightier, but it's so much smaller for you to put in your pocket or a little purse. This one, I love this one. I'm not a big gloss girl, but I love this one. And I think there's something about it being a balm hybrid that makes it even better. Oh, and the fact it comes with a cute little pouch. Like, that's just cute. Not necessary, but cute. The last one that actually stands out the most, and it's the one that I will reach for the most, is my Kaleidos. This is the Untamed Glow Glossy Lip Glaze. So it is also like a hybrid balm gloss, if you will way more opaque. This is the shade Skinny Dip. It is actually lighter in viscosity than both of these. Feels way more comfortable, way more hydrating and nourishing on my lips. Packaging, I, I mean, I like the packaging. It's comfortable, it's not cheap feeling, it's questionable in shape, <laughs> but it feels nice in the hand and it just feels so comfortable on the lips. I don't feel like my lips are glued together when I wear it, and I don't feel like it's gonna wear off as quickly as the Pat McGrath or the Westman Atelier. Longevity is a little bit better as well. Lipsticks, Charlotte Tilbury. This one is my Angel Alessandria Hot Lips 2, I believe this is. I One, I love the shade. It is a very peachy nude shade. It's so comfortable to wear. I prefer, oop, let me swatch it this way for you. I prefer a satin matte. This one is that satin matte that I'm looking for. It's not entirely opaque, but it's buildable and it doesn't look heavy on my lips. It doesn't feel heavy. This is a more flattering and comfortable formulation than both Natasha Denona and Pat McGrath. I, if I were to say, to someone that I love, what they should spend money on for lipsticks if they were to walk into Sephora. Hey, do you wanna get Pat McGrath, Natasha Denona, Charlotte Tilbury for lipstick? Get the Charlotte Tilbury. That woman knows her lips, let me tell you. <laughs> she knows her lips, but she definitely needs a pull away from all the pinks. The Charlotte Tilbury formulation, this is so comfortable and long wearing. This doesn't break up and give you that like peeling look that you can get from lipsticks or like Martina says, butthole lip. This is gorgeous. The formulation feels smooth. It doesn't set down all the way. It does have some transfer to it, but it lasts even when you wear this and you're eating your dinner. You don't feel like it's smearing all over your face. You don't feel like it's getting all over your utensils. This is wonderful. I do have to give it up to Lisa Eldridge. She has created my perfect formula this is the Velvet Lipstick in the shade Velvet Fawn. It is a matte. This is hands down my absolute holy grail go-to lipstick. Not necessarily the color, but the formulation. I have this, this, this formulation, the Velvet Matte, and I have the Luxuriously Lucent, as well as the, 
was the last one. Insanely saturated. I, oh, I adore my insanely saturated pinks. Those are just so good, but there is something so comfortable. Me as a more of a matte girl, this is my perfect formula. Lisa has created something that I feel like nobody else can. It's got that very luxury, like fancy magnet, or as my husband likes to say, wasting materials on precious rare earth metals. This just feels comfortable in my hand. Sorry for my neighbor's dog. And I just, I there is a shade for everyone. Lisa has created magic. There is a shade for everyone in her lipstick lineup, in her foundation lineup, you name it, it's there. You will find your perfect nude, your perfect red, orange, berry, it's there. And this is, I forgot to swatch it for you, the shade Velvet Fawn. It is just perfect with these lip liners. And my most expensive lipstick, this is Hermes number 11, Beige Natural. <sighs> This is as close to Lisa's formulation as I have found. Of all of the lipsticks I own, you can kind of see like a theme going on here with the color. Of all the lipsticks I own, this one, comfort wise, like formulation wise, is as close to Lisa's as I'm gonna get. I mean, there is something about Hermes. One, it's way too expensive. Like you basically are paying for two Lisa lipsticks. I would easily go tell you pick up Lisa's, but there's something about this one. One, cute little package, let me tell ya. But two, this one is also magnetic and it's refillable and it comes in like a bunch of different colors, limited edition stuff that you can just refill. This just has like this extra touch to it that I just find so luxurious. The shades are beautiful. I have a red shade, an orange, well actually two orange shades, the nude shade. The nude shade, like I said, formulation is as close to Lisa's as you're gonna get. And for a matte, it is so smooth. It is mostly transfer proof. I love this lipstick. Definitely need to use it more to get my money's worth. But mm, it just, there is something about the Hermes packaging and experience that elevates the whole thing for me. And I could just throw it in my purse and I just, I just, I don't know. I like the way it makes me feel. It's, it's stupid, <laughs> but I love the way it makes me feel. But yeah, this one, if I were to rank those three, it would be Lisa Hermes Charlotte Tilbury as far as favorite goes. I'm gonna wipe that off my hand. Oh, I forgot about the lip, okay, so lip liners. I just tried to wipe that off my hand with my rag. You can kind of see the Dior is budging. Their, actually the Hourglass isn't budging as much as the Dior. The Kristen Audette, that thing. Oh, it takes work to get that one to move. In fact, the Hourglass is even doing better than the Dior. <laughs> the Hourglass is holding on better than the Dior. That Audette though, that's not going anywhere. I'm gonna skip into contour products because contour, I don't really have like a whole bunch of them. I just have a few of my favorites that I always reach for. So I feel like that's a good place to start. The most obvious one is my Kaleidos Symphony Trio. This contour palette has both shades here that I use for contour. I don't use them for bronzing, I use them for contour, and it's got a finishing powder here. I don't really reach for this. It's these two. This one, I mean, I, I guess it just depends on how I'm feeling or the look I'm going for. I go for either one. More typically, I go for this one here for contour, especially my nose. And I'll use this one more for my cheekbones to hollow out. And right here around my double chin, I tend to use it there. And then I tend to use this one more around the corners of my forehead. This is the one I've been reaching for the most. It just has more options for me. This one's easier for me to pack. It is quite heavy. That's the downside to that one. It is heavy, but I know if I'm traveling, this one I'll take because one, it's a little more sturdy, but I have two options here for contour and that finishing powder if I don't wanna carry a finishing powder. 
Then there is my Wayne Goss. This is the Radiance Boosting Face Palette in the shade Light Gold. I really hope he is restocking his makeup line. This is one of, actually this was my first love for contour. This one here, I did not contour before I bought this palette. I use it, this palette more for the contour than I do the bronze. I do love the bronze, don't get me wrong. It is a soft shimmer gold bronze but I reach more for the contour. There's something about this shade that is perfect for me no matter the season, whether it's winter, fall, spring, you name it, doesn't matter. This contour color was the one that I was always reaching for before I got Kaleidos. I used it in all the places that I named already, but then, I mean, every now and again, there was something about going for this shimmer bronze during the summer that I just enjoyed. Can't go wrong with this one. I don't even know if it's still in stock. I keep telling myself to buy his blush because this is so good. I just never pulled the trigger. Skipping right ahead into a contour, but cream. This is so underrated. M Cosmetics cream lineup is so underrated. This is the So Soft Contour in the shade Terra. It's actually supposed to be bronze, but this is a cool tone. Like, cool tone. I use this solely as a sculpt, as a <laughs> contour. I don't really use this as a bronzer. It is so underrated. The formula is so soft. Oh, this thing is so easy to blend. It is softer than Rare Beauty. This is just a better formula. It is so much easier to blend. The undertone is so perfect for me. <laughs> it is just so gorgeous. I can't say enough good things about it. I love the component. It's nice and small. I can throw it in my bag. It's lightweight. Cream bronzers. I don't know anyone who can beat the NARS cream bronzer. This thing is good. Like good. This thing just has such a solid formula that no one... Oh, why did I put my finger in there? Don't put your finger in creams. Oh gosh. I got a piece of hair in there too. Shame on me. This one... When you think about the cost of cream bronzers, especially the other two that I have, this one is such a standard, like it is a gold standard. The cost of it is reasonable. It's not cheap, but it's not expensive. It's definitely mid-range, it's NARS, it's Laguna One. This thing has a perfect undertone. It's very flattering on my fair skin. The cream formulation is smooth. It blends in effortlessly, it diffuses, it doesn't look like you have a big orange streak on your skin anywhere. I would say, compared to the other two I'm about to show you, cost-wise, this one is the best one to go with and this one is probably the most user-friendly. The other cream bronzer here is my Chanel. This one is in the shade 390. I think that's 390 anyway. This is actually my second one. The first one, I didn't even get all the way through it and then it dried up, so. This is this, yeah, still smells good. This is the second one I had to jump, double check that. Ooh, cause I've had a bad experience with things going bad lately. This one is my second one. I bought it when the other one dried up on me. I didn't get to finish it because there's so much in here. There's so much, but I actually really like this one, especially for a luxury cream bronzer. This was like my first cream bronzer ever. One, it's nostalgia for me. I was like, a cream bronzer? Wow, that's so unique. And it's Chanel. I gotta try that and I loved it. I loved it. So a lot of it's nostalgia, but the formula is so good. It's so good. I never had the original formulation, so I don't know about that one, but I know I like this one a lot. And then you have the cult favorite, Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate. This one, I held off for the longest time. I have mine in the shade Intensity 0.5. Cult favorite for a reason. While I think the NARS is more beginner friendly, this, I use it for bronzer. I don't use it necessarily for contour. Formula is so good. Formula is impeccable. I am not gonna stick my fingers in it this time. The last time I filmed this video, I stuck my fingers in it. I have to remind myself, don't put your nasty fingers in creams that you put on your face. Germs go everywhere and they like to thrive in things. Don't do that. <laughs> Try not to do that. This thing is so soft and smooth. And while I feel like you need to work at it just a touch more than the NARS, it is so effortless. 
it is still so effortless and smooth and just looks so good on the skin. Like I said, mine is in the shade Intensity 0.5. It is not really cool enough that I would use for contour, but definitely just right for bronze. I love it. And the fact that it took me so long to try the cream highlight, one, shame on me. But two, once I used it, mm, made this palette even more worth the money, which leads me into cream highlight. Now, I don't have a lot of cream highlighters, liquid highlighters, so I'm kind of going to put them together, but I'm going to start off with this one. When I used this one finally for the first time, I was like, whoa, shame on me for not giving this a chance. And two, like, how come no one said more about this highlighter? How come no one said, hey, use this highlighter. It is impeccable for a cream highlighter, especially for someone who doesn't really like creams or liquid highlights. Use that and you are going to change your mind instantly. I changed my mind so fast. This cream highlighter, it just looks like dewy skin. It doesn't have shimmer. It doesn't make my skin sticky. I feel like it sets down and I don't need to put anything over the top of it. It is probably the gold standard of cream highlights. And once again, we have yet another Westman Atelier highlighter. This is the Lit Up Stick Highlighter in the shade Parla. Now I know this isn't everyone's favorite. I Like I said, I don't have a lot of cream highlighters. I just don't, but I wanted to pick three, at least just pick three. While this one would be the least favorite of the three, I still feel like this formulation is comfortable. I do set it, I feel like it needs a little extra help but especially the shade is just very natural and soft and dewy. It is a nice formula, not the best formula, but I feel like if I want to stick highlight and I have a couple others, they don't feel as good as this one. While this isn't the best formulation, this is the best of the stick highlighters I own. And then there is the creme de la creme of liquid highlights. Like I said, I'm throwing this in with the stick and the cream because I don't have a lot. I held off on the Lisa Eldridge highlighter for so long, so long, because I, I just, I couldn't get behind creams and liquids. I just couldn't. And then I tried it and I have never looked back. This one is way more beautiful than the other two. As much as I think that Tom Ford is creme de la creme, hands down top favorite cream highlight, liquid highlight, this girl. This is your girl for liquid highlights. Lisa created something here. This one is the liquid highlight. She created something here. It sets down on its own. It doesn't have shimmer. It's like a perfect glassy finish. It's so lit from within, like natural dewy skin. And I love that. Those lip liners still haven't moved. <laughs> and I've been wiping my hand off. The hourglass is starting to budge, but that Kristen Audette's still not. Let's go into cream and liquid blushes. I am gonna combine these two and just pick my three favorites here. I'm gonna start off with M Cosmetics. Once again, like I said, this formula is so underrated. The cream products in the M Cosmetics line is so underrated. This is this mm, Lychee, so soft blush. Lychee, is it Lychee or? Lishy, I don't, I don't actually know. Maybe I ask Alexa. <laughs> this is a very peachy shade. I love this formula so much. I'm not gonna repeat what I said about the formula because I already did that with the cream contour. There is, it's so soft and blendable. It doesn't tear up your base. This formula is amazing. I can't say enough good things about it. Get it on sale, especially uh, what's the other shade? There's a purple shade if you're a cool undertone. I cannot think of the name, but it's a purple and it's gorgeous and I have not found another purple cream blush quite like that, which is so flattering for, for fair cool tones. It's amazing. Then we have Miss Vanessa Myricks. This is the Yummy Skin Blush in the shade Bellini. On, I've got three shades. I've got like the hot pink and I've got like the baby pink and then I've got the peachy. This one 
because I haven't used the peachy as much as the, the hot pink. I use that one more. This formula is so soft and smooth, like just the cream to powder. Once you put it on your face, you put it on your skin. Actually, I think it's very similar in tone. Let me just swatch that. Once you put it on, it just kind of melts into a powder. It is very weird. Oh, it's definitely brighter. It's very weird, but man, it is, it's magical. Like Danessa has created little magical pots of blush. It's starting to, look at the, I don't know if you can tell, it's starting to turn to powder here. It's so cool. It's definitely brighter than the M Cosmetics. But this just is so flattering and you diffuse it and it looks so healthy. It's, it's not overly flat. It's definitely not luminous like the M Cosmetics, but it is just, it's got a lovely sheen and it is so user friendly. It's very, very user friendly and flattering. Then we have our cult favorite, Rare Beauty. This is a matte liquid blush in the shade Virtue. A little goes a long way, it really does. But dang, this is opaque. This is opaque. You gotta be so careful with this. It'll last you a lifetime. I got this shade in the fall because it is the perfect fall shade. It just screams fall. It'll, it'll go a mile if I let it. You get so much product. This thing, not the most user friendly. Let me tell you, it is not. You definitely want to be careful. Got to know what you're doing. You use the right brush. You want to use just a little bit because it's it's a lot. It's not very sheer. It's it's way more opaque, but it's gorgeous. The Rare Beauty ones, very affordable. You get so much, so much product. The the Nessa Myricks one is also quite affordable. I would say it's more user friendly than the Rare Beauty, but if you want a liquid versus a cream to powder you have options. This one's a solid cream, cream to powder, liquid. It's worth having some variety in my opinion. Let's skip into bronze. This is the Surratt bronzer. Oh, when this came out, I fell in love. This is the artistic bronzer in the shade Soleil Doux. Soleil Doux, Soleil Doux. There is something about Surratt's slurry formula. When I tell you this formula is so velvety, so velvety, it is amazing. Whatever magic is in their formula, I mean, I could do without the, the fragrance, but whatever magic is in this formula, this formulation, whew, I wish everyone could experience this formulation without the hefty price tag because it's so good. What they need to work on is the shades. There are only two, it's not inclusive, gotta work on the shades. I am obsessed with this formula. I need this formula in literally everything. It's so effortless and blends so perfectly. I mean, it's what I'm wearing and I just feel like, one, the tone is great. It's a solid neutral and I can't go wrong with it. But two, you can't overdo it. You can't be heavy handed with it. And it just, it's so easy to diffuse. My second bronzer here. There is a theme going on. This is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Bronzer in the shade Diffused Bronze Light. Whoa, this is a luminous bronze. This is a bronzer I wanna go with all the time. Like It is hard for me to wanna use a different bronzer. This bronzer, if I don't want a bronzer that's flat, I'll reach for this one. It has a luminosity to it that you just have to experience. You gotta try it to understand it, to know it. Everyone's talking about Hourglass all of a sudden. I don't know what it is. <laughs> they deserve it though. The formulation on their powders is top tier. You're not going to beat it. No one's been able to dupe their powders. There's something about it. This one, this baked formula, it is so friendly. I mean, you, you can't overdo it. It can't be cakey. It's just so diffused. And when you use it, you see it and you understand it. Diffused and flattering. It is mature skin friendly, it is youth friendly, it doesn't matter, it's expensive, but this is probably the one type of powder and bronzer that everyone just needs to have in their collection. There's something about it I can't put words to, I can't describe. 
I love this bronzer. It's been hard to find a bronzer that mimics this or even is better than this. And as much as I love my Surratt, there are days I want a more luminous look or a luminous bronzer, and it's this one. And then there's my paperweight, Miss Westman Atelier. This one is, well, it's not new, but it's not old in my collection. This bronzer, let me tell you, first of all, heavy duty, luxurious packaging, like in your face, luxury packaging here. Embossing is stunning. It is a gorgeous formula. This is the Beauty Butter Powder Bronzer. I have mine in the shade Coupe de Soleil. It's very neutral. It's more neutral than the other two. This thing, it's not luminous, but it's not, it's not matte either. Like it's got more of a satin look to it. The formula is impeccable. I love this thing. I know it's super expensive and the packaging is really weighty, but I love that the packaging is magnetic and it's smaller. I really love this whole paperweight type of experience. It's like a golden rock. This is gorgeous. I will always repurchase this one. I think it's just set in my collection now that I have to have it. And I love the little extra piece that you get with it. While this one doesn't give me that glow effect like the Hourglass does, there's something about it that stands out. A lot of it is the packaging, but also the formulation. It just feels silky and smooth and it's so effortless. Highlighters. Highlighters are just so subjective. Some people like beaming highlighters. Some people like flattering, soft, subtle highlighters. This is my old school MAC Mineral Skin Finish Powder. This is Light Scapade. If I just want something really subtle and soft, this is what I'm using. I am not reaching for a beaming highlight. I'm reaching for my Mac. It works for me. It's subtle. I've had it for so long. It lasts forever. <laughs> it lasts forever. There's so much in there. It is just a healthy, luminous, lit from within glow. And it's subtle. If you just want subtle, it is subtle. Then we have an oldie discontinued one that was well worth the hype and still is. Miss Pat McGrath, this is her Divine Rose in the Skin Fetish formula. Why she has not made this formula, this baked formula, permanent in her collection is beyond me. Now, I know it's a stretch to say everyone's favorite because how dare I? But this is such a favorite for so many people. This formula is the most flattering formula. I feel like this was the cash cow that she needed to like cash in on when it comes to her highlighter formula. The powder highlighter formula that she has does not live up to this. This is flattering. It, it doesn't emphasize texture as much as some of the other highlighters I own. It is smooth. While it's not perfect for my skin tone and definitely like not something I'm gonna wear during the winter for sure, I get so much use out of it because there's so much product in there. I don't understand what's happening with Pat McGrath, but dang, this is the one she should have cashed in on. This one, I'm, I'm so tired of limited edition highlighters. I really, really am. It just irks me. I just want more in this formula and a whole range of shades. That's it. That's all I want. I feel like I'm not asking for too much there from Pat McGrath. The Charlotte Tilbury Glow Architect Highlighter. This one is in the shade Moonlit Glow. Perfect, it's in stock, you can get this. There's a variety of shades that suit just about every skin tone. This one is beaming in my opinion, not quite as beaming as the Rare Beauty, but in my opinion, more beaming than the MAC. It gives me a beautiful, smooth finish. I don't feel like I can overdo it, but I also feel like one, it doesn't leave a cast because it's the correct shade for me. But two, there is something about it that is just subtle and yet still bright. So formula wise, it works for my skin type. It works for my undertone. It's not as bright and bold as the Pat McGrath there. It's a beautiful in-between from the MAC and the Pat McGrath. It's just right. And I actually reach for this one more than any of the other highlighters I own. I reach for this one. Blushes are 
arguably my favorite. There is something about blushes. I have more than anything else in my collection. The Pat McGrath blushes are so good. The formula is so smooth and airbrushed. It, it just blends in effortlessly. This is my favorite shade. And then there's, I think it's Divine Orchid. That one I would say second. This one is Nude Venus 2. It, it's flattering. I don't know if you can get this shade anymore, but I know Nude Venus is a permanent in the collection. I just think this one's a little more subtle than Nude Venus. I, I have taken this one with me when I've traveled. The compact is nice, it's lightweight, but it's also not cheap feeling. It's luxurious feeling. It does have the snap closure. There is something about this shade and it's kind of like a theme in this whole thing. It's, it's, it just works. I enjoy it. I can use this for every single look. It doesn't matter if I want to wear a colorful eye or a nude eye or a smoky, it's going to work for everything. And then we have Suku. This broke my heart. Suku cannot make this formulation anymore. There is an ingredient missing that they needed. They had to discontinue the melting blush line. They still have their powder blush line, but they had to discontinue the melting blush. That broke my heart. This formula is so silky smooth. So beautiful, so silky smooth. I have their other powder blush. It is just as beautiful and airbrushed, but man, there is something special in this one. I really, really hope that Suku can figure it out and find an alternative to whatever the ingredient is that they need. I have quite a few of them in this formulation. I truly hope, truly hope they find an alternative because this one is so underrated so underrated not talked about nearly enough packaging is luxurious and slim magnetic closure you can fit this in anything just about it is so travel friendly hourglass blushes oh i just i'm at a loss for words here because you can only say so many things about makeup without so sounding redundant and i'm gonna sound very redundant so like i said with the bronzer it's so airbrushed and flawless you can't overdo it there's something about this that just is so flattering and it looks like a healthy luminous glow this is the shade sublime flush it is my favorite shade in all of the hourglass blushes like i mentioned in a different video they need to extend their shade range add a few new shades they haven't done it in a long time i am waiting i'm tired of waiting add some to this collection please i need more I need more like this. Just help me out. This this one right here, my favorite. I did have one in this formula that just did not work whatsoever, even for my even for my pale skin. But I definitely want to pick up at night the brick red. It just looks so beautiful. I have yet to pick that up. I'm gonna wait until a sale. The Sephora sale might be the perfect time. Man, you cannot go wrong if you need just a, a healthy, luminous blush. This is your girl. This is the one. And I, I'm just going to end up describing the same thing I said about the bronzer. So let's just keep it moving. I say let's keep it moving like I had something else. But honestly, that was the last one and I was not paying attention. Thank you guys so much for sticking it out with me. I truly appreciate you. I'm in disbelief that I had to film this whole thing twice. Whoa, everything on my face will be linked in the description box down below. Those links are affiliated. Thank you so much for supporting me if you use those links. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day. I know I have. Please do something for yourself today because you are absolutely worth it.